Are you ready to get lost in lust? Immerse yourself in a thunderstorm of emotions and passion. Order John Luca Zana's new book, Perfectly Crazy, 69 Erotic Visions and Love Poems with Forbidden Erotic Italian Phrases. Perfectly Crazy by John Luca Zana. Available all over the world at Amazon.com and www.zana.us. Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna on KTOX 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. This is the final hour, the hour about love. I had him on my show a few times. I met this man uh, on the field, let's say, the field. Yes, exactly, because that was a battlefield. A battlefield between good and evil, between an oppressive government and uh, the American people who wanted ju just to exercise the basic American rights. That for me, they also are human rights. They should belong to every human being. We're talking about the right to peacefully protest, to peaceful, peacefully exercise our First Amendment, and also our Second Amendment. Yes, that's part of our God-given rights. The right that we are not here to be victims. We do not want violence. But if you initiate violence, we have the right to protect ourselves. And uh, the story is kind of almost, uh, as I said before, at least I was talking with my friend Eric J. Parker over the phone, almost funny if it wasn't so serious. Because let me show you right now what exactly happened just a few days ago. Remember Eric J. Parker? He was one of the many people who came to help peacefully, the bandits, in their, let's say, stand against the BLM, they were taking over the ranch, the animal, their cattle. And the point is, like him, there were other people. Eric wasn't the only one. I was there as a journalist, but also as an American, and I was so proud, and I'm so proud that I was there. I took a photo that I also put in one of my single CDs on Amazon. Eric, me, and Scott Drexter. I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed of what I did. I'm very proud. That was for me one of the most beautiful day as American. My point is though, from that day, most of you know what happened, at least have an idea. No violence was used, but just because you were there, just because you were interfering with a government action, just because you did not want to say, stay confined in a corral, because that was the area that for us slaves, we were designed to be in this 10 by 10 or whatever, fence area, First Amendment zone. No, we, we are not cows. We are not gonna go there in the corral or in the cattle area, okay? Just because we were standing there peacefully, some of us, many of us faced prosecution. The sad thing is that this is not like the typical day in front of a justice system. That's what we're supposed to have at least in, on paper in our constitution, our Bill of Rights. Now, this was completely a travesty of justice. Think about it. And I will go more with details now with, with, with Eric. He's waiting on the phone here. I don't want to hold him. The point is, after one, almost two years in jail, him, Scott Drexter, they've been tried to be sentenced twice. I mean, they, be, they have the trial twice. And they were hung jury twice. I call that for me double jeopardy. But the federal government wasn't happy, so they wanted to try him one more time. Almost like during the time of, you know, King George, Kangaroo Court. Yeah, they send you to England and uh, they will find a way to, 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 to you know, that is, it's just a joke when you go in court like this. Still, they try twice. And then of course, think about millions of dollars of our tax dollar we use for this prosecution that for mostly was a personal agenda, not even a personal, that was a government agenda. They wanted to set an example. Don't you dare slaves to ever challenge us. Whatever we're doing, we are gods. People may say, you know, out there, you know, uh, Eric or Scott or anybody else who pointed rifles at the government. Uh, let's remind one thing here. Let's remind one thing, who pointed the gun first? at unarmed American people. And I can tell you as a first eyewitness, this is not something I'm reporting because I read it on the internet. I was there, never in my life, I had a government agency pointing me 
but I was unarmed with my video camera, just doing my job as a reporter, had a loaded rifle pointed at me. They don't do that even on the southern borders with illegal aliens. If they're there, they get, they get sued. But us, they were okay with that. And then, of course, they were also pretty vocal on, on, on the megaphone. If you do not despair, they will shoot. What is that, China? So that's why I said, you know, I'm proud that people like Harry J. Parker, Scott Drexler, anybody else out there who had the strength to say, wait a second, we don't want violence, but if you start to shoot and unarm American people, we have the right to defend ourselves. I don't care who you are. You could be the Pope, uh, you know, federal government or the Martians. That's fine. We don't give a crap. We're not going to die here. So that's the bottom line. But you know what? These people, they were facing, you know, Eric J. Parker was facing 100 years or more. There was no victim, but the charges, they were serious. Then, of course, meanwhile, no bail was allowed. Let's not forget. And the man has no previous rape criminal record. He's clean. He's a, he's a working man. At least he used to, because he lost his job, of course. Not only lost his job, probably lost his home. I will ask him now. For sure he lost, you know, this priceless time with his children and his wife. Something that the government never going to give you back. But no, you know, bail was not allowed because after all, you know, he's not Hillary Clinton. Forget about Hillary Clinton. You know, he doesn't even get the chance to Hillary Clinton. doesn't get charged. So that's the point. And meanwhile, we have $150 million, you know, of... Uh, uranium salt to Russia and you know no excuse me 150 million dollar cashed by the Clinton Foundation while she sold out our uranium so that's the bottom line okay let me shut up I have very much the honor and the pleasure to have finally with me Harry J Parker who's been right now found uh he had a plea a deal with the feds with the prosecution him and and uh, Scott Drexter to plead guilty of just a misdemeanor. Think about it from 100 years in jail and now just facing a little misdemeanor, you know, that's it. Meanwhile, they spend millions of dollars to try to prove the case. Harry J. Parker, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing? Well, I'm fine. You know, we talked last time uh, you were still uh, behind bars. And, uh, you know, I'll, I tell you, I'm almost shocked what I found this news today about you having the opportunity to finally get out and put this behind you. I'll give us the details, please, exactly how things roll since the last time we talked. I mean, you have to face now, in now the last few the next few days, another trial for the third time they were tried to put you in front of a jury. So really what happened the last few days? So it, uh, it started after, after the second trial. Um, we were acquitted on most of the charges and uh, the jury was hung uh, 11 to one to acquit on, uh, uh, the assault and the threatening charge. Um, that still had, uh, two 924 C's on it, which are enhancements. Um, I was facing, um, a possibility of a mandatory minimum of, uh, 32 years still. And, uh, if, if as we've seen, um, so far, uh, it very possibly easily could have been, um, 50 years should, wow. should, uh, I had been maxed out. Wow. Um, so what happened was, uh, the, the judge, um, told the prosecution, uh, that it was, um, reasonable to consider that, uh, things didn't happen the way they were saying after one hung jury, and then the next acquittals on the conspiracy and, and, and numerous other charges, she said, listen, uh, it, it, it's reasonable to say uh, your, your, your case isn't what you might think it is. And um, they, they released us on uh, pretrial. Um, pre -trial. Uh, so uh, we did get to, to leave and uh, uh, go home at that point. Um, but we were waiting for the next um, trial. The, the judge uh, at, at the calendar call, uh, the next time I was in uh, a hearing, moved us in with uh, the the Bundys. Yeah. But she could ask the prosecution again. She she said, "Are are, are you positive you want to go forward with uh, Scott Drexler and Stephen? Or I mean, sorry, and, and Eric Parker. Um, Stephen Stewart and and Ricky Loveland were acquitted fully. Um, they were in uh, the 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 last trial with me. Um, so." At that point, the prosecution said, oh, absolutely, we're, we're going forward. Uh, 
Mm. Um, about, I'd say, a week prior to uh, getting ready to go back into this third trial, uh, they and it is, it is, it, it was. I consider it uh, double jeopardy going into triple jeopardy. Yeah, um, triple but, jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, so about a, 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 about a week prior to going into that third trial, uh, they asked what would bring us to the negotiation table. And we, we said, well, we're, we're ready to go to trial. Yeah. Um, we have faith that, uh, a jury has, has not seen it their way and, and, uh, and wouldn't again. But, uh, at, at that point, um, they offered, uh, Scott Drexler and I uh, misdemeanors time served, uh, uh, a year of probation and but they they hinged on each other so if, if i didn't take it uh then then scott didn't get it mm. if scott didn't take it then i didn't get it mm. so it it took a couple days to kind of get on the same page because i'm not allowed to talk to the defendants we have to get the lawyers yeah to uh call and and kind of do a conference call and um so we did that and discussed it and uh decided we would take it and then when we told them we would take it they pulled it off the table after the shooting in Vegas. Yes. Um, I have a question. So when you they, were when you were in ahead. prison, you were in the same room or the same area with Scott, or you were separated? We were in the same area. But you yeah, could, we, you couldn't we were speak. In the same area. We spoke. Oh, you could speak. Yes. Okay. I understand. And the, and then now that they let us out, they said we can't. Of course. I know. Uh, okay. But uh, so then. Um, we got on the same page. We said we would take it, but then they pulled they pulled the deal off the table. They said we waited too long. Oh, wow! Uh, um, the sales pitch. But I, I, yeah, the the I think the um, the shooting. Personally, I think the shooting had something to do with that. Yeah. Um, at that point, they offered another deal of me taking a felony and Scott Drexler taking a misdemeanor. Wow. Again, they hinged on each other. Wow. Um, if I didn't take the felony, Scott didn't get the misdemeanor. Um, I, I, I was not prepared to take a felony. I, I, um, and, uh, didn't want me to take a felony either. So we were both yeah. prepared to go back to trial. Yes. Um, and then, uh, the, the, as you know, uh, you guys know that the trial was pushed back that day. Um, and, uh, so we had a, another couple weeks and again, uh, right, right before, uh, the 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 calendar call they they got a hold of us and and said um, you know uh, what do, what are you guys considering what do you what do you what's your life thinking and uh, my lawyer at that time told me, well he was here ready to go to court last time and we haven't really talked since so yeah I imagine he's ready to go to court yes ready to go to trial mm -hmm. um, they then sent us uh, another offer of a felony. And my lawyer immediately declined. And um, uh, later that night, um, he got a hold of me and he said they just offered a misdemeanor. And <clears throat> at this time, I, I, my understanding was that Scott, they separated us and Scott was already um, in negotiations to take uh, the misdemeanor. So they offered me the same misdemeanor uh, time served. And, uh, wow. I decided to, <coughs> I decided to take it. Um, really there was a couple reasons. Um, you know, I, I hadn't made any decisions out of fear up to that point. And I, and I wasn't going to, um, I, I, I was going to continue to not make any decisions, uh, out of fear. Um, I, but the, the logical uh, answer was you know, that it was obvious we weren't being fair trials. We, we weren't able to, uh, to you know, and, and, and I, I won't go into that too much, but I mean, the, the trials were, were um, uh, well, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, and, I mean, let's talk one second about that, because whatever I could read the information coming from the, your day in court... I mean, you didn't even have a chance to speak. 
for what I understand, the judge a couple of times told you just to shut up. And you had the basic right to at least uh, not only face the accusations, but try to defend yourself. Am I right or wrong? Well, yeah. And I mean, they'll, they'll say that uh, I, I, uh, we weren't following uh, the, the, the court order of uh, how I was supposed to testify and what I could talk about and what I couldn't. Yeah. I, I honestly, I was doing my, my, my best to, to stay within the perimeters of that. And um, uh, try to answer the questions to the best of my ability without going into the things we weren't allowed to talk about. We weren't allowed to talk about um, the um, militarization of the BLM. Basically, I wasn't allowed to talk about my feelings um, and, and how I, I, I was told I could talk about the things I saw and heard, but I couldn't talk about how that made me feel. Um, you were and, able to say uh, that they were pointing guns at us first because that's pretty much was the idea. I mean, we were unarmed American people in that place. Some of us, they were media. Some of us, they were just peaceful protesters. They were, we weren't throwing rocks. We weren't doing anything. We were just there chanting or talking or whatever, just standing. And these people called BLM agents and Mr. Dan Love, of course, as, as a poster child, you know, guy that it was, in my opinion, should work for some, I don't know, Gestapo or something like that. He was there. And the orders coming out of the megaphone, they were scary. And more important, the guns pointed straight down range towards us. They weren't exactly friendly. And you, we didn't start, to, I mean, you guys, you didn't start to point guns at, at these people just because. First of all, you were just that, there in a ready position, as I said many times on the show. Your finger was on the trigger, was on the ready tuck down and look and monitor what's going on. And that was the most sensible and I say responsible thing for a law abiding person to see if there is a crime in the middle of a crime, you're supposed to be at least try to prevent a crime. If somebody shoot at you and you are unarmed, I would do everything to try to stop that crime. And that's the way I look at yeah. that, that day. Serious, simple as that. So did you have a chance to talk to the jury and say, by the way, these people called BLM or wherever they were, dressed as, as Rambo, they were pointing guns down at American people who were just there peacefully exercising the First Amendment. Did you have a chance to say that? No, no, not 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 at all. They don't they didn't want us to uh we we they they basically tied our hands uh on, on all aspects of our defense. Wow. Um we we weren't allowed to um there was no self-defense defense is what they ordered. So, um, and I wasn't allowed to talk about how they were dressed. I wasn't allowed to talk about what they looked like. You know, I was, I wasn't allowed to talk about a lot of things. I see. And, um, so anyways, my point being is, is I didn't feel like, um, this trial was going to be any different. And, um, the, and obviously, you know, it, it worked out. I mean, we didn't even give a closing argument in the last trial because we were unable to discuss anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I assumed it was going to be, it was, it was adding up and, and looking like it was going to be the same um, situation again. And, you know, maybe we hang the jury, maybe we don't, you know. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was a possibility that, that we could have the same outcome. But, um, you know, in each jury trial, you don't know what the jury's going to do. Exactly. And so, especially so, now, I'll tell you, you know. something with this Las Vegas shooting, that I already said on my show, this is things like I really like a, an inside job, or at least there is a huge cover up that now is also mainstream media. Unfortunately, the jury would be still very much, uh, in my opinion, could be influenced emotionally. That anything now with the guns could be a freak, okay? Or a, cr a criminal. Doesn't matter if he's a law abiding person or not. And the funny thing that was this guy, supposedly, uh, the alleged shooter, was from Mesquite, Nevada. That's another interesting coincidence. So, uh, yeah, I think probably you did the right thing, in my opinion. Uh, but this is. Yeah, kind of, you know, like I, like I said, it, it was, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do anything out of fear or fear based, no. but it, it was just logical yes. to, to, to get out if I could keep my rights. And, uh, you know, a misdemeanor is a misdemeanor, um, you know, and, and honestly, frankly, um, it's, it's a, it's a misdemeanor obstruction of yes. a court order mm -hmm. that's so 
my feeling is that the government was, uh, I, I won't say forced, but I'm sure uh, they they were they were made to get realistic on their charge. If if I was to have been, I, I said this uh, before uh, on interviews. You know, I I was going down there. I had heard they were arresting people um, for not being in this free speech zone. Yeah, and. I, I was not going to be in the free speech zone, so logically, I assumed I may be arrested yeah. for uh, not being in a free speech zone. Uh, anybody who is going to a protest um, should be willing to take a, a misdemeanor obstruction charge. You know, whether whether you're, um, you know, doing a sit-in or or you're doing um, civil civil disobedience of any any form. You know. Fine, um, but you know what? You know, you know, I completely agree with you. That's fine. Could be we could discuss about the misdemeanor and obstruction, or whatever. But the funny thing, it is not funny at all. It's a travesty. They didn't start with you with a misdemeanor. They started with you that you have been gone forever, and they were that serious yeah. about it. They put millions of dollars and hours and hours and resources. That I tell you, that's why this is such a, a travesty, because they wanted to try to set an example. Now, don't you ever dare to challenge us as the gods, also called federal government, in anything, when it comes down, whatever we want to do, we will do it. And you as American person, you shut up, take, really put yourself on a hide when we come, just hide. Like during the time of the Middle Ages, when the lords and kings, you know, walk the land or ride the land, everybody bows down. I mean, that's the bottom line. And the serious thing is they try to get you for a hundred years or so. We talk about that during the first trial. You know, before the first time, I had you a few times on my show. And I know, by the way, our show was monitored. I can see the IP address. I had everything, Homeland Security. I had DOJ, I guess. I don't know what I had. I have the old .gov agencies on my show. And I'm a little local, humble radio show. I can't believe it. But the point oh, is... Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's <laughs> ridiculous. They were trying to set you for 100 years. You were supposed to be there. My gosh, 100 years in jail. Not even if you kill a few people, you get 100 years. You may get out, you know, much easier. You didn't kill anybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't hurt anybody. Uh, what I was facing was a 160 <laughs> years with an 80-year mandatory minimum. Echo. It was 11, 11 felony federal count indictment. Okay. Um, conspiracy charges and, and extortion. And, yes, they, okay. they, they stacked it. Um, they knew what they were doing. They made it to where we had no bail. So the idea was, I mean, they came at me first with a 10-year Oh my uh, gosh! Plea deal. My God, ten years. Um, so they're like, "Well, ten years is better than a hundred and fifty, you know." Um, I mean, and this, there was no bail. We were being held. Uh, what they want to do is, is um, scare you in, into signing that that deal, that confession, and uh, I, I have a and, question, you know, Eric. Take you away from your family, and Eric, I have a question because this is what shocks me. These people are supposed to be human beings, supposed to be Americans, supposed to be people that. Somehow they want to take down the bad people. Supposed to be, you know, the people who got after real criminals. But this is like, a, for me, like an organized mafia, legalized mafia, and I'm responsible for this, not you or anybody else. Because when you tell me somebody know very well that you are just, you know, a guy may have maybe made a mistake on some situation, but you never done anything criminal to deserve 160 years or whatever. And they try to throw you completely destroy your life. They would be better if they shoot you on the spot. At least, probably, you know, less less drama and less pain. This was a slow torture for two years almost. And then, of course, after all this, okay, after all, you are not that bad. We give you a misdemeanor. I mean, this is almost an insult. And this is like almost show that they are full of BS. Because if they really thought that you were so bad, they would never give you this deal. If from 160 years in uh, rotting in jail, having your life ruined forever, and now you go back to what a misdemeanor, means that they they knew that you, they they were full of crap, and they were just trying to force you like a poker game, just to destroy your life. There was I don't see any other reason here. Am I right or wrong? What do you think? I mean, am I too crazy? Am I too harsh on these people? Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say you're too harsh. You know, I've, I've got my opinions. Yeah. Uh, certainly <laughs> they, they, uh, you know, um, 
I won't go too far into my opinion. No, I understand. Uh, by the way, now but, when you, you miss the minor situation, you have like one year of probation. That means they still come at your home to visit you. To do, you, you cannot have a gun yet. I mean, how does it work, the details? So I'm not really sure yet. We'll find out during sentencing. Sentencing, they, they moved back sentencing. I'm not really sure why they moved it back so far, but it's okay. February. All right. Uh, I'm sure they have a reason. Uh, oh. And then... We can speculate as to why with okay. these other trials coming up. Yeah. Um, but uh, the uh, it, it, it'll all come down to to what the judge puts down in um, in the conditions of the probation. She still has uh, a lot of control over over that. Um, the uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, why I think is something about something? Ahead. You know, you know, Pete Santilli. He took a deal just a few weeks ago. And he pleaded guilty of a felony. For my opinion, even there, completely wrong. Because, uh, you, you know, listen, I, I'm completely, I think that you should even get even a misdemeanor. You should get a medal, in my opinion. If I was the president, I would give you a medal of freedom, period. But that's just me, of course. I'm just, I have my opinions. But for sure, Pete Santilli, as much as I have a lot of things I don't like about him, I don't think he deserved a felony. And he went for it. Because after all, he even didn't have a gun on him. He was just there with this microphone. And he even was down there at the, at the, at the part that was the, the standoff or whatever you want to call it, the peaceful protest. He was even there, I know, because I, I was down there and he didn't come down there. For some reason, he didn't come down there. Maybe he knew something I didn't know. All I know that uh, I was there, I took the footage and, he did, and then asked me for the footage. So he wasn't there. Why you think- No, he wasn't. His, his battery went dead. <laughs> I, I, I watched uh, uh, on the dash cam, you know, or I mean on the, um, on, on his video, yeah. You, uh, his video, he, he, the battery for his iPad goes dead, and he has to go back and uh, film from his car where he can plug it in. Strange. Um, uh, why do you so, think he so got? Listen. Why did they give him so, such a deal? I mean, felony, and he, and he went for it. Well, here, here's the thing. Yeah. It's we're we're kind of. I mean, we can't talk about the discovery or, or these things. Yeah. Um. Yet, because of the protective order and stuff, but uh, we're we're privy to some things that not everybody else is. And um, it's intimidating. It, it's scary. There, you, you have uh, the, the, the Ryan Payne uh, types that, that are, because that's the thing, they call this a big conspiracy. Yeah. And they, and they, were, they were never able to get, um, unless somebody signed to the deal, um, you know, they were never able to prove a conspiracy in court. And, but uh, when you're tied to these other people, and you don't know what they did, and then you see in the discovery um, some stuff that 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 is questionable, and and you know that that's going to um, come in in front of um, in front of your jury, and and you know um, you're, you're you're privy to certain things that um, make it even more intimidating and, and more uh, uh, questionable, and. Uh, I, I think that, you know, we all make a, a decision for ourselves. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I don't think he deserved a felony at all either. Um, I don't think he was guilty of a felony. Um, he pulled in front of a convoy uh, for about 11 seconds. Wow. And uh, they told him to move his car, and, and he moved it. He was just trying to pull off the highway, and they happened to be pulling off a dirt road. And, wow. <laughs> and uh, so, and that's that's the uh, that's the. No, the and, and listen, I understand. I wasn't there. I didn't spend eighteen months in jail. I understand how people can break down. That's slow torture. Okay, it's torture, especially when they scare you out. You know, they say, "By the way, we're playing with you. We have all the money of the world. After all, we use your tax dollar." And uh, you don't even have a chance to stay home while you wait for trial because we are so corrupted that you have no bail. And more than line, more important, you're here with real criminals eating garbage away from your family, being afraid maybe they're going to rape Absolutely. you every time you move your car. I mean, I, 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 I completely, nobody can speak but you guys that you were there. That's for sure. But at the same time, the interesting thing is you were able, I believe there's a miracle there, and also, of course, your persistence and Scott's persistence together. And you were able to get a misdemeanor. Him, bang, and even did have a gun. And all just because he put a truck for 11 seconds in front of their majesties. I mean, 
he got a felony. Now he's supposedly screwed with the rest of his life. So that shows you that there is no justice. This is just like a poker game. And that is like pretty much like the mafias and intimidation. They try to scare you out and see how, how much you want to play this poker game. And if you're not strong enough or maybe you're not lucky enough, bang, you're going to be ruined the rest of your life. There is no justice. Well, you, you bring up you bring up a good point. You know, there if if the, if the justice system was equal and, and legitimate and um and 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 fair, you you all these defendants in this trial, yeah, in this indictment, have had such different outcomes. Yeah. Now you have you have uh, ta- uh Gregory Burleson. He's facing. Well, he, he, he's been charged and convicted, and and he's going to do 68 years. Jeez. He's, he's going to – he'll most likely in all reality die in prison. My God. Um, and, and what he did – what he was guilty of was, was um, talking and saying some stupid things on an interview. Yeah. Now, I, I don't um, – I never knew Gregory Burleson before this. I, I never – uh, uh, hung out with him. I, I, I even have my own opinion of him, but does he, uh, uh, is, is that legitimate? I don't think so. Um, then you have Todd Engel, uh, Todd Engel. He, uh, they even said on the stand that, uh, NHP said that he was helpful up there. He was, he was trying to, uh, be helpful. And, and the NHP said he was helpful. Now he got, uh, charged with two, uh, are convicted of two lesser charges mm-hmm. and, and in sentencing, they're now trying to give him 15 years. Wow. Um, he, uh, and, and you have, uh, uh Jerry Delamus who, who wasn't even there until the day after he, he pled guilty early on and, um, and they gave him seven years. This is the same charge that Pete Santilli, uh, pled to, yeah. who got uh, a, a, a recommendation of time served and released. So there's no method to the madness. There's no, um, there's no uh, uh, similarity in, in any of the uh, char- uh, any of the co- charges, convictions, I- I- any of the outcomes. They've all been so different. And if we, you know, Scott and I, uh, the difference between Scott and I is we were willing to go to trial twice. Yeah. And, yeah. and and then a third time if necessary yeah. um is that the, is that the difference it, it, it might be um uh, it, it's hard to say i mean all we're doing is speculating but we do know that there is no um polarity in the outcomes you know and if we're all supposedly guilty allegedly guilty of these same uh charges and and the same situations then um it just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. It's like almost when you go to a used car deal. I mean, car, car salesman. You know, not everybody gets out of the shop uh, with the same price. It's uh, how how smart you are, how strong you are in negotiation. This is about the justice system. You know, uh, it is not about the justice or the facts. It's about okay. Let's see how strong you are to go there and and stay steady and and play bluff. That's what they do. I mean, this is very serious. Meanwhile. It's not a bluff. It's not. It's not a joke. Not only you lost your job. I'm sure you, your job. Of course, you lost your income for almost two years. I, I know yeah, that. Yeah, uh, we we have some serious uh, rebuilding to do. My uh, my life was totally turned upside down. My wife, uh, she uh, had uh, some things happen to uh, her her her, uh, her job, and then um, was. Um, you know, uh, she came down and, and she spent the, the, the past two years uh, and, and at these trials trying to bring attention because the media would not report fairly. Um, and uh, or the, I mean, not even fairly, just the truth of, of what was going on. Uh, so, yeah, we have, uh, you know, we, we've we've got some serious rebuilding to do. We're, we're not um, they, they they got their pound of flesh. Yeah, sure. I mean, for sure, they they give you pain. They could like, destroy you completely, but they 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 did something that for me it's not humane to anybody. You know, especially in this country, we're supposed not to have this type of tyrannical system, because as I said, at least you're supposed to have with no previous crimes, no previous records, you're supposed to have at least the right to to post bail to wait for your trial in a place that you could still stay home keep your home and uh, pay your bills, still going to work. And then when you have to go to face trial, you go. 
You were in like a risk uh, situation. You were in like, oh my gosh, you have a private jet or you are like a convicted criminal. So that right there, it's an injustice. I said to everybody on my show every time, I don't care where you stand on this issue. This is about now due process or not. That's the bottom line. So, and uh, I don't even want to ask you, I mean, forget about the money part that is terrible, but the time that you had, you have young children and uh, some of them, they're so young that almost two years of their life without a father. That's terrible. I mean, how did they see you when finally they saw you back again when you were released? What, I mean, I'm sure they would, they suffered a lot in these years. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and, and, you know, um, being in there under, under the might of the federal government and, and, and especially after the first trial and, and even, you know, the, you have to, I had to mentally prepare myself to be in there forever. Yeah. My, my, uh, you can't focus on maybe we'll get out. Maybe, maybe, you know, you, you have to put yourself in a position of, you know, the, uh, uh, you have to look at it in, in, in reality and, and in reality you, you have no bail. You're in there and, um, uh, you're facing a lot of, time it, it was a death sentence you're facing death and it's so true. you have to put yourself in in <sighs> that mindset to be able to make it through every day and when i when i got out and, and i was able to actually hug my wife and uh my mother flew the uh the kids down from seattle and the first first time i i I was able to, to hug them and hold them again. It, I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think that was ever going to happen again. Yeah. And, uh, um, I'm grateful for that. You know, I know God was with us, with me. Oh, it's and, a story. Uh, this is a movie story for me. And speaking about movie, I don't know how your writing skills, but if I were you, I would write a book out of this. And maybe that's going to give you the opportunity, not only to let people know really what you went through in details but also give you some monetary compensation that you and your family deserve i mean seriously this is something that i would do everything to share what happened to you because this is something people they were so detached we think okay you just spent 18 months somewhere no this is wasn't somewhere especially when you know that you were guilty they destroy your life and also you know you had to start everything from scratch i mean this is ridiculous now, what is about Scott? I mean, I, didn't, I never had a chance to talk to him, but indirectly, when I talk with you about you, I talk about him too. You know, uh, did you? Are you in touch with him? No, we're not allowed to talk. We talk through the lawyers once okay. in a while. Scott Drexler, um, at forty-seven year, by the way, is older than you. And I met you both. Yeah. You know, that day you remember we took the photo together. That I still have on my Facebook, and I've been putting it out. Speaking about, you know. I heard from your wife that during the trial, I don't know if it was the first trial or the second trial, the prosecution mentioned my name. Is that true or not? I think it's true. Yeah, they, they, brought, they brought that picture in as uh, <laughs> evidence. Um, they, uh, they called it the vacation picture. Uh, <laughs> and and, and they, they talked about how uh, Scott and I were smiling. And, uh, oh. you know, that's... Uh, that moment was, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> immoralized <laughs> and, uh, and in the trial. I'm Absolutely. putting it right now on my Facebook page. Uh, you know, I've been posting this photo even after, especially after I heard that from your wife. It's still there. It's not going down on all. It's also on Amazon, by the way. If you go to Amazon.com and you click uh, uh, Live Free or Die, uh, that's the song that I re-edited as a single, and I put it out. And... Um, for a period also, I, I really gave that for uh, little donations. Everything that I was selling, that single was given to a PayPal to your lady for for whatever we had at the time. But anyway, my point is, I knew very well that supposedly I could have been next because uh, just the fact I was there with you and uh, reporting the news or just with my press, they don't care. I mean, after all, Santilli was reporting the news too and they, they drag him down. And I was expecting any time to come to get me. I, I want to be very fair with you. The only thing, I didn't want to be uh, so helpful to go in front of them, especially in front of a court, 
People say, why don't you go to the court? Why don't you go to the court? First of all, I say, you know, please stop judging others when you don't know the facts. Uh, my job right. is to, to try to be a reporter and try to bring this news as much as I can. The moment that I go into a court, especially with such a corrupted court and with such a, you know, completely, there is no due process. They can arrest you just because they don't like the way you look, okay? But on top, you know, hey, if Santilli is there, oh, let's get also Zan. After all, you know, you need to spend the gas money to go pick him up in Moave County. So, no, I didn't want yeah, to make that. I didn't want to make the life got, easier, you know? I've got no... Uh... I, I don't judge anybody because I mean they 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 were uh, I I called it an ongoing investigation yeah. uh, when we were uh, they made us proper our witnesses and, and anybody who uh, was there was uh, facing the possibility of an indictment you know that's what I'll say and um, and I, I listen uh, I don't know they may still come for me I don't know I have nothing to hide at the same time they don't care I have nothing done wrong they don't care. It's like, you know, they throw some meat on the wall. Something's going to stick sooner or later. Meanwhile, worst case scenario, they destroy your life. For them, I think some, right. some of these people, they're really evil. I'm sorry. And I'm sure there are some prosecutors out there that they really try to get the, the bad people in jail and they do this honestly. But in this situation, after I witnessed what happened to you guys, this is nothing about justice. This was like intimidation. This was like completely abuse of power. And I'm behind these wars, not you, nobody else. I'm the responsible. I really believe this is a travesty of the American justice system. And I was hoping that President Trump, I know he's just the president, but guess what? The DOJ, I mean, after all, the attorney general is under his uh, control, at least. I didn't like him. I don't like him. Session, he came a few months ago during, I think, your second trial. And he was somehow congratulating the prosecutions. Oh, such a great job and dedication. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. I, I, you know, I, I voted for the man from inside. Uh, <laughs> after the ballot. I wasn't a you felony vote. yet. Uh, I wasn't a felon yeah. and I was able to vote and I did, and I voted for him. Um, and you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I agree with you. Uh, sessions what is, is, is a joke. Yeah. And you know, I, after the second trial, I was released, uh, my, my local legislators, uh, and I had 54 Idaho legislators write a uh, write sign onto a letter that was written by Dorothy Booth, uh, calling this a tra tragedy of justice and, and uh, questioning uh, the vindictive prosecution and the double jeopardy and, and all these things. And um, then uh, uh, Raul Labrador, uh, uh, one of our, our congressmen, uh, I went and met with his uh, with his, his people. And he wrote a cover letter for it and, and gave it to Sessions himself. And and uh, still, they they you know what should have happened is these charges should have been dropped. Yeah. Um. Uh. And, but they they've got their hooks in you, and 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 you know we could have kept going for a couple more trials probably. Yeah. With hung juries. Um. But I, anyways, I guess you know I I I was really hoping that this administration would do something. And, and I, I still do. I still wish that, I, you know, there's still good men in there, sitting there, uh, away from their families, um, and, and, and awaiting a trial. There's there's a whole other uh, group, another tier. Uh, speaking about the, speaking, the, the, we're talking about the bandits. You were in touch with, uh, at least you could see uh, Amon, Ryan, and the father. Could you see him? At times, yeah, uh, at, at different times. Um, I wasn't in the same pod with them um all the time but they, they kind of move us around a lot in there so uh, and the, the last the latest news that uh it seems like uh is almost the final standoff they want him down i don't think they're gonna plead any type of deal with them for what we know i don't know we'll see but at the same time i heard uh some video i watched some videos that there is some people talking that they are really going harsh in uh in in jail with the, with uh Ammon and ryan did you heard anything about it uh, just what I saw on the internet. Um, the, you know, I try to, I try not to speculate too much, yeah. but, um, I, I know that, you know, Ammon and Ryan have their principles and, and, and they're, they're not willing to budge on, on them. Um, now me personally, I can tell you, you know, my, uh, people can, 
call you a bootlicker if they want to, but I wasn't trying to make my life any harder than it, it, yeah. it necessarily had to be. Sometimes you need, um, to, you need to be smart. The point, you know, you know when you can win a body, sometimes you need to when you need to wait. Because after all, there, you are in the, at their mercy. And uh, I understand, you know, what you, you got to survive me while I believe, uh, you know, I, I'm not here to judge anybody. You know, as I said, I never had, hopefully I'm never going to have that type of experience. But only people who went through that can decide what is good for them. That's all I can say. All I think I can right. tell you, I'm proud of you and Scott that you were ready to, to stand for the truth that you were not going to play this type of deal and let them know that you were guilty. Because the moment that you were playing, you were guilty. You were going to bring everybody else down. Instead, you saved yourself. And in my opinion, also, you save a lot of other people because uh, they lost the case with you. Think about it. Now, everybody else that was just there maybe with a photo camera, uh, I don't think they're going to really be that uh, um, cocky, these bastards. They're going to say, okay, let's try again now. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that they will either. Um, they, they had a real hard time through this. It, it was not easy. Um, uh, they, they, they weren't uh, able to do uh, uh, what they thought that was going to be so easy. Um, you know, the the fact of the matter is um, that I wasn't willing when they offered me the felony. It was uh, uh, felony threatening a federal officer. And, and part of the reason there was numerous reasons, but part of the reason I would take that is because I, I disagree. I, that was not I mean an officer. I was not threatening anybody. Yeah. Um, I, I did not assault anybody. Um, I, I was not, um, you know, now if they want to call a, 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 a misdemeanor obstruction, well, you know, um, uh, in, in a perfect world, it would have been nothing, but um, uh, uh, I, I can live with uh, misdemeanor obstruction. I hope everybody else can. Yeah, I think we can live that too, honestly. You know, and guess what? Uh, meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, uh, she got pretty much now, it's official, you know, after forget about Benghazi, forget about the 30,000 emails. You know, meanwhile, I had here on my show a Navy sailor that for a couple of photos that you took on the submarine, Mr. Chris Sosier, he spent one year in jail and he became a felon for the rest of his life. So meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, not only she did all these things and much more, but also now we just found out that uh, she's involved, uh, used a position of power when she was Secretary of State. She got about $150 million and she completely uh, gave away 20% of our uranium to Russia. And I wouldn't be surprised some of that uranium was also in the area of the Bundys. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. But the sad thing is, not only that, nobody's still talking about even pressing charges. I mean, if it was you or me, forget about that. They would come with a SWAT team and get you in the middle of the night, okay? If you were doing, well, yeah, no, no. I they, mean, they would absolutely, like they and, did to you. They, you know, the I'm not sure if it had uh, if there was any uranium out there. Um, I know that it was a mu it was very much about the water, yeah. Um, and you need water to mine. So, yes. but um, the what it what I do know what I do know that we were yelling two years ago from the rooftop uh, with the mineral reports of the land that the Hammonds were having taken from them uh, uh, directly coincided with uh, the uranium deposits. And I know that um, there was posts from Uranium One uh, thanking the sheriff in, in Harney County. Um, I, know, I know that it's connected without a doubt to, to the Hammonds uh, property being seized and put into that uh, uh, that refuge, what they call the, the, the wildlife refuge there. Um, I, I read those mineral reports myself. Um, yeah. And, you know, so there, there was a, I, I believe there was a, death, a direct co correlation with um, uh, what happened in Harney County and uranium one in the Clinton Foundation, you know, um, uh, Soon after, we're all yelling this from the rooftops. You know, everybody was arrested, uh, and a man was killed on the side of the road. Uh, you know, Lavoy. Yeah. Let's talk. Um, also, I mean, talk about him, Mr. Lavoy. I mean, poor soul. I mean, meanwhile, he didn't have a chance to face a trial. They just executed him. Period. I mean, 
if somebody and, and everybody was and, and those people were acquitted uh most people were acquitted you know uh, jason patrick still yeah uh, but and we're back to you know you never know what happens with the jury yeah but um that first trial everybody was acquitted and and lavoy would have been in that first trial yeah and and he would have he would have been acquitted yeah. but they shot him they yeah. shot him on the side of the road um you know in, in an in an ambush jesus and no, even an and animal. He never had a chance. No, even an animal. It's so sad, even to think all this was televised. You know, like we are here to see. You know, I don't believe in it by accident. Things were by accident. Why did they even release that video? Especially when there was so much evidence, they were completely in the wrong for what they did. I think they just say, so what? The point that there was an execution. There was even like uh, any type of uh, self-defense situation. It was a pure execution. That, by the way, it was also a poor execution. I mean, if you have an animal. And you want to kill him? You kill him with much more respect. At least it's a clean death. M much more. That was a complete. Uh, I tell you, uh, butchers, butchers, less than butchers. You know, seriously, I, I, I'm concerned about uh, Scott. The excuse me, Scott Eric, because uh, if this is the justice system right now, we have nobody's safe. That's why I've been talking all these months about this. This is not about you, about Scott, or about anybody of us. It's about every one of us even if you don't go to the bandis standoff even if you don't go the point just because the federal government decides that you are not with them you just you they don't like your opinions they can destroy your life and you have no more the basic due process that right now in my opinion we are the same level of china seriously maybe a little less uh you know colorful they don't shoot you in the back of the head in front of the public but they still ruin your life because 160 years in jail or something for a non-crime, I rather to be shot in the middle of uh, you know uh, Chinese Square. Okay, at least I got a, a, yeah. a fast death, quick death. I, I agree. We're we're in trouble. We are. This uh, the system we have so far from what it was intended, and it's so manipulated and and, and convoluted that uh, um, they they they. They can indict a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? and, um, and this is, uh, people ask me, oh, look, this is the hour of love. What we have to talk about love? This is love, my guys. This is love. This is about, you know, talking about not just worry about yourself and your sandwich and your little world. Talking about it is a fellow human beings, in this case, fellow Americans, who have their life completely destroyed. And many of them, they may be destroyed forever. When you are, you know, 68 years in jail and you're already pretty much out there with the years, you're dead. So the point is, this is about loving our people, loving humanity, and especially when we know that there is evil out there, because that's what I call it's evil. We have to at least have it the is. courage to speak up. That's what I can do. I have a little microphone. I tell you, I want to share this information with as many people as I can, because maybe at this point, when we realize what type of trouble we are in, we can change it maybe. But if we still think we're in the land of the free or of the brave, guess what? Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Stop. You know, that's the only thing we can do. I want to give you the floor. You got two minutes. Whatever you want to say, something I may have forgotten, people you want to uh, thank, you got the floor. Whatever you want to say. I was uh, reading a book while I was in there, and uh, I, the, the name of the book escapes me. But the what it said was, and this was written mm, 10, 15 years ago, it said that, that people, if we were going to fix this situation, that uh, what it was going to take was people willing to be on the front line through civil disobedience and uh, willing to endure the system. And it would take others to support them through, through that endeavor. And, and Scott and I looked at each other and we said, well, wow, that's, that's what's happening. We, we were in the, uh, in this situation and, and we were enduring and fighting and all the people that helped, my family and, and helped uh, support us um, through, through many different avenues and means. Um, what I, I, I want to thank everybody who, 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 who helped us and, and who, the people that even writing the letters, you know, there was days we, we would have our, our, our asses handed to us in court and I just didn't want to go back in there. And, and I would flip through the letters that I received and they were from all over the country. All, all over from, from, from Florida to Maine, from, from New York to, to, to California. And I, I realized how many people were paying attention and, and wanted to support us. And, and 
and it would give me the courage to go back in there. And I, I appreciate it more than, more than, you know, I can even say, and, uh, you know, my, my, my faith, uh, the, the, the Lord, uh, really, really had a lot to do with it. And, and I'm just so grateful that, um, that I, I had that support. My family had that support. And, um, At least you know, Eric, I, I, I love you all. I, I'm really proud of you and I'm proud that uh, I had the honor to meet you one day in real life. I hope we can meet again in this life. And I tell you, you for me and Scott and other people like you, but for sure you are the one really on the grill, in my opinion. Because, you know, everybody else, of course, just because we are there, we're supposed to, you know, be intimidated. But the fact that you were there and you had the audacity to say, do not shoot at us, do not shoot at innocent people. We will defend ourselves. We defend the innocent. Uh, you are completely on the first line of the chopping block. That's for sure. And uh, a, a, you have found the courage to don't give up and don't surrender. And that's why I think right now you are here, in my opinion. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Let's be in touch, please. And uh, keep in touch. Also, I want like to sp talk to Scott, too. I never had a chance to talk to him. I see he's still on Facebook. I'm trying to find him. And uh, let's see what's happened the next few weeks, you know, especially let's see what happens uh, with this county the next few few months, because I believe we are really facing something that is beyond uh, that what we imagine. I, this is my just sensation, but I think we are facing a new reality that is, it's, it's very, very sad, but I hope we can change it. We will try our best. I want to give you a hug and my best to your lady, by the way, she's a real fighter. She never gave up. I saw her always on Facebook, on videos, she always was there on the front line. And uh, you, I'm, I'm sure she's lucky that she has a man like you, but I tell you, you, I'm sure you're very proud to have a woman like her. Oh, I'm, I'm very proud. I'm, I'm very lucky, and, and uh, I, I'm blown away by her strength every day. Um, she, uh, a, a lot of men in that situation wouldn't have been so lucky, and, and I, I thank God for that. Very good. Listen, my best to you. Listen, at this point, don't go away. Stay one second there. Uh, this is it for today. You've been listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. This is my fourth year on the air. I cannot believe it. I don't know who's going to be able to do that again for four more years. I don't know. I go a day at a time, a week at a time. Meanwhile, I appreciate your help. If you want to support the show, please go to www.zanna.us. Www.zana.us. That's the way I can keep doing what I'm doing because, of course, sponsors, especially after this bandy situation, the trial, they don't want to talk to me, and that's fine. I don't need you guys. I need you, the listeners. That's what I need. Talk to you next Sunday. God's willing. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman. I'm not afraid. And a constitutional activist. I'm not afraid. Italian by birth. American by choice, Jean-Luc Gazzana. I'm not afraid. And his new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Luca Zana's new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. <laughs>